Hi students, in the previous topic we had discussed about priority interrupt and before that we had seen uh, modes of transfer, different types of modes of transfer. There are uh, the three different types of data transfer. One is programmed I.O., another one is interrupt initiated I.O. and the last one is direct memory access. In that topic we had discussed about the first two methods there itself. Now we are going to look at the direct memory access. Okay, what is this direct memory access? In those two modes of data transfer, the CPU's intervention is very uh, is required. CPU monitors the data transfer uh, between the memory and peripheral devices. Uh, I already told you CPU's um, CPU must not be used. For unnecessary works, CPU should only be used to execute instructions in the program or it should stay idle. It should not be doing lesser important works like monitoring the data transfer. Data transfer is not intelligent. Okay, So, the data transfer between memory unit and peripheral devices uh, will be monitored by an input output processor input output processor or a DMA controller in some computers. So, in this topic we are going to look at how this uh, direct memory access happens under the observation of input output processor which is our next topic 4.7 is input output processor. So, these two topics are interlinked. Okay, So, please uh, observe what input output processor is doing in this direct memory access. Okay, so now first of all, the I/O device, any one of these I/O device, many I/O devices are connected to the I/O processor. I/O processor will uh, will receive the requests from these I/O devices and inter and interrupts the CPU to serve those requests. Okay, in the previous topic, priority interrupt also we had seen this I/O processor. So, whichever, whenever these I/O devices are sending re, uh, interrupt requests, those requests are received by this input output processor, and it will decide which I/O device should be served first. Okay, so I/O processor is very important, and here this direct memory access is uh, done under the observation of input output processor. Okay, let us start direct memory access. Assume that one of these uh, peripheral devices send, uh, wants to uh, access the memory unit. Okay, the data transfer could be either from memory unit to peripheral device or peripheral device to memory unit. Okay, so then that peripheral device will send a request to input output processor, and that is called DRQ DMA request. Okay, so upon receiving this DMA request, input output processor will send an interrupt request to the central processing unit interrupt request okay now whenever the cpu re receives a, uh, receives an interrupt request from in input output processor it will suspend the currently executing instruction or program temporarily and uh, response uh, response with the help of inta interrupt acknowledgement interrupt acknowledgement okay so when the input output processor receives acknowledgement from the CPU uh, permission for uh, for the input output processor to carry on this direct memory access, then it will send a reply to the peripheral device which had requested DMA okay, uh, through a signal called DACK that is DMA acknowledgement. Okay, these are the four important signals that are used whenever this DMA happens, direct memory access. Okay, so if you observe here, the CPU uh, acts as the master and the input output processor acts as a slave and CPU only, uh, CPU only initiates the uh, data transfer and uh, IO processor will execute this data transfer. Uh, this execution can be done in two ways, one is cycle staling, another one is burst transfer. That is, that means if the data that needs to be transferred from memory to a peripheral device is a small uh, less number of uh, bytes, then it uses memory stake, uh, memory stealing, sorry, cycle stealing method. That means CPU will be executing any uh, some program. 
and meanwhile some memory uh, some memory cycles will be used by the io processor for the purpose of data transfer okay no continuous data transfer will be done uh, it will be done intermittently cpu will be executing instructions and uh, in between it will be giving control over the buses which are required for the data transfer to the io processor this is called cycle stealing okay memory cycle stealing and one more thing is uh, the other method is bus transfer uh, the bus transfer is needed when the data transfer data that is required required requested by the peripheral device is a huge memory block so such huge memory blocks of data cannot be transferred with the help of uh, memory uh, cycle stealing method so during that time cpu will not be execu executing any instruction it will be staying idle and giving the control over the buses data bus address bus control bus to the input output processor so that it can monitor the data transfer between memory unit and the peripheral device which is requesting it this is how the direct memory access will happen now let us look at the communication between cpu and the io processor during this data transfer during during this direct memory access okay just look at this flowchart so initially cpu sends an instruction to test the io path okay upon receiving that uh, test test signal it will send the status status word to the cpu okay uh, based on that status if the status is okay then the command will be given to the io processor to carry on the uh, direct memory access okay after giving the instruction to the io processor it will continue with its uh, uh, some other program okay this happens only during the cycle stealing because uh, io processor doesn't require continuous uh, control over the buses address bus data bus control bus okay so when the number of bytes needs to be transferred is less the cycle stealing happens and during that time cpu will continue with another program okay but if the data that needs to be transferred is a huge memory block then this this thing will not happen cpu cannot continue with another program as it has given control over the buses to the io processor okay you please mind this now after getting the control from uh, permission from the cpu it will uh, conduct the io transfer using dma uh, prepares uh, and uh, simultaneously it prepares the status report how much how many number of data bytes have been transferred how many are remaining that kind of status report will be prepared by the io processor and once the transfer is completed uh, it will interrupt the cpu and as soon as the interruption uh, received by the cpu it requests the iop status okay uh, then the io processor will transfer the status word to the cpu and it will check the status if, if it finds everything is fine then it will continue okay this is how the communication between cpu and uh, io processor happens here cpu is acting as master and io processor is acting as slave the cpu initiates the work and rest of the thing will be executed executed by the io processor okay this is direct memory access so if you compare with the other two modes of data transfer programmed io io process io sorry interrupt uh, initiated io there the cpu has to monitor the work okay it ha it is doing less important work okay but here uh, that is removed uh, cpu is only used for the initiation and after initiating the work uh, either it will do another work or uh, it will execute another program or it will stay idle but it won't waste its time for this kind of data transfers thank you